Hello, my friend. How are you today? So thank you for tuning into the Speak Truth podcast yet again for another Tuesday or whatever time of day or week or month or year it is. And I just want to share with you, my friends, I am a 40 something who lost her way and has now found her way to serve him and help my brothers and sisters find their way back to the truth. I found the way, the truth and the life. I was once lost and now found. My mission is to lead my brothers and sisters back home to God and his kingdom in heaven. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew six thirty three. Oh my goodness, my friends. So I was just working on my book, just some editing some stuff. So when I say I'm writing a book, it's pretty much um, my journal or diary. or I don't say diary, I guess. My writings, I write every day. So whatever I'm feeling, you know, I read a meditation or it's on my heart, an idea, thought, I just kind of write. And so I saw this one. I'm like, you know what? This kind of fits a little bit to today, what's, what, how, I, mm, how I was feeling. Because I was crying earlier, just emotional. Must be that time of month. I'm like, oh, no, Lord. But I just heard a song, which is a very popular song that you might know. It's um, Hillsong United, Oceans Where Feet May Fail. Oh, my goodness. That song just has like history with me and it just brought me back. I just started thinking like 10 years ago from now, from like today, like where was I in life? And I was like, wow, I just was very unhappy and started thinking of the people in my life back then. And just, I started crying and just realizing, my goodness, I just, it's been a long way, a long time coming. Like I was searching and seeking God and I remember listening to that song like a decade ago and just being at my brother's house, I had that vision of like being there and just singing out loud and tears come to eyes. Like I wanted God so bad, but I was living in sin. I was in a bad place. I just was just trying to find, you know, peace and joy and happiness, which we're all kind of like on this journey. And I just, and then it just like led to a bubble, like all the things that I did. And I just have started having these like thoughts and old memories of just like my sins it's almost kind of weird. It was like, I'm crying and I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. Even though I know I'm in a better place now and God has, you know, I repented for my sins and turned from my old ways. And, but I just still, it just brought me back and just, oh, the life has just been such a journey and I've never been in such a better place than where I am right now in my life. It's like, and here I'm 49 going on 50. So that's why I say in my forties, but like, I think all along in my 20s and 30s and 40s, I've been seeking God. And I had a God in my life and I knew who God was, but I didn't really like surrender my life to him. You know, I did things for my children. I pray, went to church. I loved God, but then I kind of fell away like we all do at times, you know, maybe you can recall a time in our life when we were younger or a chapter or season our life where we were so close to God and then something pulls us away and and we, we get lost out there and then we we start we're back in the desert again, wandering, wandering, right? We get it's like so close but so far away. Like it's funny, I went to mass this morning, like I didn't even plan it. I I did know I wanted to maybe like either stop at church before or after um my kickboxing class at nine thirty in the morning to say my rosary, my prayers. And but then I got up and I was like, oh my goodness, eight o'clock, I can make it to mass. And I'm like, oh, I get so excited. So my goodness, God, your plans are better than anything I could ever imagine. And so I'm so excited to go to church and I get behind a slower car and then a light and then another light. I'm like, what is going on? Just trying to be patient and just waiting for cars to go by as I'm trying to get in. And I'm like, I can see the church. I'm like, oh my goodness, God, I'm so close yet so far away. <laughs> You know, because I was like a minute or two late or two minutes late. So I'm like, oh, and it's usually when it's like a 30 minute mass, like it goes quick. So, but when I did walk in, he was, they were just standing up to do the gospel. So I said, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for being late. You invited me to this meal, to this mass. And here I showed up late. I need to leave. I should have left at eight, but no, my selfishness was like eight o'clock. I'm like, okay, I got 15 minutes. If I leave at 8.15, I'll have time. And so, you know, I could read my gospel meditation and do my writing because I wanted to have it done because like I get too anal and then I guess it, I can get into myself of like, I want to do, my, do something for me first. And then, you know, even though I have God in my mind, I want to go to church, but if I didn't do that, I would have been late. So yada, yada, like, you know, we can always like look at everything we've done and stuff, but 
But yeah, in life, like we we're chasing, we're chasing, we're running this race and it never ends. Or you maybe you hit a goal and then yay, woohoo, I did it. But then it's like, what's next? And then we're just always chasing and chasing the next goal, the next thing in our life. And just in a constant like battle of like just running after the next thing and just getting caught up in the world. Instead of just taking a step back, taking a deep breath and relaxing and slowing down. Slow and steady wins the race, you know? But then why does that have to be life be a race? It doesn't even have to be a race. Just let's live life and slow things down and let's just walk and enjoy the moments of life. So I had a flashback just thinking, like, you know, I mean, right now, let me ask you, like, it's, you know, as you're listening to this podcast, it's recorded, it's aired 2024. And but either whatever year you decide to listen to this, just think 10 years ago from where you are, where were you in life? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it struggle? Was there pain? Was there suffering? Was there dryness? Was there emptiness? Was there loneliness? Despair? Joy? Beauty? Like, where were you 10 years ago? You know, and it's like sometimes that helps us to, as bad as it is, maybe to go back and see some of the pain that we went through or, or you know, we um, inflicted on ourselves or on, on others in our life. It's almost like a reminder to say, wow, look at God. It's like a screenplay, like a movie. You go back and watch it and you're like, oh, okay, I don't like this. I don't like that. Let me forward this. Let me skip that, you know. But it's there. We can never get rid of it. But, you know, God is so loving. He's so merciful that he loves us. He doesn't judge us for our past. Once we come to him and give ourselves to him and surrender our life to him, oh my goodness, and turn from our bad ways, our, our wrong our wrong ways, our faults, our mistakes, our wrongs, whatever it is, our sin, that's what it is. He just opens his arms so big and invites us in home. But it's us as humans. We are so weak. And Satan, the enemy, knows how to just like sometimes bring us down and remind us like, look what you did. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. Like, how can God love you or forgive you? Or how can anyone love you and respect you? Like, look at you. And, and, and of course, I look at some of the things I've done and it was horrible and just, just, just so bad. And, but God, he loves me. There's no sin so great that God cannot forgive So my friend, whatever you've gone through in your life, whatever sin you think that God can't forgive or you're feeling down and about in despair and in a a dark place, isolated, maybe you feel like you're in hell. Oh my goodness, reach up to him. Look up. Stop looking down to the floor and the ground and a ball on the couch and the the bed, depressed and despaired and crying and, and conflicted with everything you've done. Let it go, let it go, and give it to God. He is the one who can free you and set you free, and he did on the cross. He redeemed us from our sins, and we need to let go of our sin and know that God is so loving and merciful that he died and took away our sins. He He redeemed us and freed us from the slavery of sin. And we have the sacraments. So if you're in need of a refresh, a renewal, oh my goodness, to be restored, Go receive the sacrament confession. And of course, in the meantime, you can always say, God, forgive me. Ask God to forgive you. But it's always nice to go to sacrament confession. You know, it's not just a man. He's a priest who's been ordained and blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit and has the power to forgive. God gave the disciples, the apostles, the power to to bind or loose. Gave them the law to make law here. But, But it's through the Holy Spirit, though, that really forgives us. He's just the physical person there, you know, and the parents. He stand, he's like God's standby, you know, like he's there. You know, because how nice is it if you ever go into confession, like, oh, what a beautiful thing when you hear the Father say, I absolve you from your sins. I mean, yes, we can pray to God and ask God forgive us, but to actually hear the words, I absolve you from your sin. That is the Holy Spirit speaking through them. Just like we we as Christians say, God, use me. Let me be, let me be your vessel, your instrument. Let me share your word. Well, God, the Holy Spirit, through his power, he he absolves you from your sins with those words. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I absolve you from your sin. And it's a beautiful thing. And then when you can receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, oh my goodness, the power in receiving our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity. My goodness, my, my friends, just like, oh, this morning, just beautiful. 
just beautiful, beautiful. I cry all the time when I receive our Lord. It's just, oh, I thanked him so much. It's like, even though I'm showing up like physically, but I'm like, God, you called me this morning. You invited me here to the table plenty. Like, I am nothing without you, God. It's you. All the good that I have comes from you, my God. Everything good comes from him. Whew. So my friends, let this let this episode be a reflection, you know, to to not put you in a bad place, but to remind you if you're in a better place today, or maybe you're still on that journey, you're still trying to find your way, that this will give you hope that there is an end to your misery, my friends, and it starts right now. You don't have to wait months or weeks, you know, like a diet to lose weight or, or to learn something or to build something. Like right now in this moment, this instant, God will heal you. He'll forgive you. Take away your pain, your sins from you. But you have to reach out to him. You have to call out to him. You got to look up to him and say, God, here I am. Here I am. Take me as I am. I surrender everything to you. I give you everything that I am. (laughs) I give you everything that I am because I am nothing without you. I give you everything because it was you who created me and made me and molded and shaped me into the person I am today. I am nothing without you, God. You breathe life into me. So here I am. Here I am. I give you back what you gave me. Like Surrender everything, my friends. So if you're in a place right now If you feel dry, if you're in a season where you're in the desert and you feel alone, you feel lost, you feel confused, you feel empty, God is with you. He's always been with you. But we have to do, we have to turn to Him. He gives us the power to choose, which is a beautiful gift. He doesn't make us and force us to love Him, He waits patiently. He walks patiently with us by our side. Even though we think we're abandoned and neglected, he's there by your side and wants to comfort you and he wants to embrace you with his love and his mercy and his compassion, everything that he is. And tell you everything's going to be all right, my child. Everything's going to be all right. I love you. I forgive you. Your sins are forgiven. Like, oh my goodness, my friend. So God gave him himself. (sighs) He gave us the sacrament so we can be one with him. Right, because through the sacraments, we are allowed to receive Him and we receive God's grace. That's how we're able to, God's life, a share in God's life is through grace. And we receive the sacraments. So if you feel like you lost it and you're, there's no grace, God loves you. Turn to Him. Go to the sacraments, receive the sacraments. And oh my goodness, you will feel renewed, you will feel restored, you will feel alive again. Oh my goodness, my friend, I love you. So with that said, I hope that you felt moved today. Um, Reflect on your life. Take this moment to reflect. Um, You know, think about where you are in life, how you got to where you are, and where where you're going next in your life. And that no matter what happened yesterday or what's happening now, God is with you always and forever. He is with you. He was with you yesterday. He is with you today. And he will be with you tomorrow. But you need to personally invite Christ, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, into your life. Into your life. So I ask the Lord, Lord, please take me as I am. Take me. I am here for you, my God. I invite you into my home, into my heart. Dwell within me. Share your love. Transform my heart, my mind, and soul. I want to walk with you. I want to know you. I want to live for you. Like, mm, thank you, God. Jesus, you're so good. You're so loving. You're so kind. Like, oh my goodness, there's nothing, there's no love greater than God's love, my friends. So if you're feeling there's something missing, open your hearts to God. That's the missing piece. You feel like you're just chasing and running after the next goal or the next race, like slow down, let God into your hearts. I love you, my friends. And uh, Jesus loves you even more. Turn to him wherever you are in your life. You're not alone. I love you. And Jesus loves you more. Give up your life, surrender your life to him and watch him transform your life for the better. I love you. Much love, peace and happiness, my friend. God bless.